Hi, my name is Brooke, and I'm from the Washington State University Chemistry Department, and I'm here today, today to talk about the Chemistry 102 Buffers Post Lab. So our first question is, you'll likely notice that one of your two buffer solutions had a lower pH than the, than the other. Which one did, and why would its pH have been lower than the other? So hopefully, in your observations in your lab, you notice that one of your buffers between your buffer 1 and your buffer 2 had a difference in pH. To think about which one had a lower pH and why, we need to look about what was in each of our buffers. So in our buffer 1, we had approximately 60 milliliters of our acid, which in this case was sodium dihydrogen phosphate. And our conjugate base, because these are con a conjugate pair, was our disodium hydrogen phosphate. So in our buffer 1, you had 60 milliliters and 40 milliliters of our acid in our base. In our buffer 2, we had 40 milliliters of our acid and 60 milliliters of our base. So whenever we have more of our acid in solution, more protons in solution, our pH is going to be lower. Whenever we have more base in our solution, that pH is going to be higher. So that will help you answer question 1. Question 2 is asking you to compare between your buffer 1, 2, and your DI water the pH changes when you added carbonic acid to the solution. Carbonic acid, as in the name, is an acid. So hopefully you look back at your data and you'll see that there should have been a pH change between the three of them. But to think about this conceptually, when you're adding acid to solution, you're putting more protons into solution. So one of these solutions should have been better at neutralizing those positive charges, those protons that we put into solution. And to look at that, we need to think about how much of our base was in our buffers and how much of our acid was in our buffers to be able to neutralize that. And our DI water had no acid and no base to be able to neutralize that. So think about that conceptually and look back at your data and answer question two. For question three, you were supposed to use one basic solution and one acidic solution that you used in lab. And to do the same thing, to compare between buffer one, two, and your DI water in those pH changes. For questions four and five, you were asked to explain why, when you added an acidic solution or when you added a basic solution, why those pH changes would have occurred. To think about that, we can have two imaginary beakers one filled with more acid and one filled with more base, just like our buffers one and two. When you're adding an acid to solution, you're adding protons, right? That's what causes our pH to go down. When you're adding protons to solution, our buffers try to keep that pH at a level amount, but depending on what's in them. If we have more of our conjugate base in solution, they're more readily able to absorb, to neutralize those extra protons in solution. Versus when we have more acid in solution, if you add acid to our acidic solution, there's not as much base in here to be able to neutralize, to handle those positive charges. So think about that and how if something's able to neutralize incoming charges, how that would change the pH. Now if we were to look at a basic solution, right, if we were to add more HA into something, if we add it into something that has a lot of acid in it already, you have a lot of protons here that can be pulled off and neutralized that basic solution coming in. Versus something that already has a lot of base in it, there's not as many protons that can be pulled off to neutralize that base. So think about that, think about how uh, our our buffers can handle those incoming charges from either an acidic or basic solution, and that should help you answer questions four and five. Thank you.